So welcome back to Supply Chain Secrets. And this week we are talking about freight procurement, sometimes a very, very big area of spend in a business. And with us today, we've got Trent Morris and that's coming right up. So freight procurement this week, and uh, we have one of our uh, popular experts back on the channel, Frank, uh, Trent Morris. I was going to call you Freight Morris, <laughs> Trent Morris. Um, thank you for joining us again, Trent. Um, so one of the biggest areas of uh, indirect spend in some businesses would be freight. Um, what sort of role can procurement pl pl play in that? Because uh, I've, I've seen a lot of businesses where they're, 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 they're pretty relaxed about how they buy freight um, and procure freight. And it's a big spend area, isn't it? Yeah, it, quite often it's one of the largest spend areas. Rob, you're absolutely correct. Uh, in a couple of organizations I've worked for, it was either the largest or the second largest mm. freight spend, uh, second largest spend in the yeah. procurement bucket. So, yeah, I think, the, I think the biggest challenge that I've seen in my time is when you've got a requirement for a uh, some freight and mm. you simply go to market, you ask for a quote and then you implement that, mm. which for that single trade lane is not a big deal. But when you're talking about an organization that has multiple trade lanes and multiple carriers, it becomes a very big deal very quickly mm. because it's the classic case of the tail wagging the dog. Um, a better way, in my opinion, a better way of approaching it is to simply define what you actually want them to give you. So for example, if you go to someone and you say, I need to move a, I need to move goods from A to B, mm. they'll come back to you with their standard format. Mm. But if you go to them and say, I want you to quote this, I need a kilogram rate or I need a tonnage rate or I need a pallet rate or I need a pallet mm. space rate. You know, and then you tell them, and if it's a pallet, I want you to quote from one to five pallets, mm. six to 10 pallets. And you yeah. go out to every single supplier in that same methodology, yeah. suddenly doing the analysis and understanding who's going to offer the best service and mm. the best price, et cetera, becomes very easy. Yeah. But if you allow them to dictate according to their standards, you might mm. be analyzing 10, 15, 20 or more different suppliers and they're all got different standards that you need to try and manage. Mm. That is so common. And, and one of the biggest problems I see people is that they're, they're, they're procuring freight and it's the wrong uh, freight rate. So, you know, you're talking about kilogram rates, pallet rates. And if you get that wrong, you can be spending way too much. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. there's a number of different ways. We, we have some fantastic specialists in, mm. uh, in the team that do nothing but analyze mm. that type of freight spend. Mm. Yeah. But from a holistic perspective, you're absolutely correct. I mean, if you, a great example is, is you might be moving a heavy, heavy commodity. Mm. And so you're much better working with a tonnage rate than a pallet rate because you can only get 22 pallets on the standard truck. Mm. but you might be able to get 24 tons on that standard yes. truck. So yeah. the commodity becomes cheaper at a tonnage level than it does at mm. a pallet level. So yeah. you need to understand the intricacies of your specific mm. business before you actually go out asking for those rates. Mm. So I mean, some of the work that we do with uh, our consulting clients is uh, helping them rationalize their, their uh, freight or, or, or carrier support. Um, and, and very often we're, we're working with large companies that have hundreds of different freight companies working for them. Mm. Um, I, I know you've had a lot of experience in that. I mean, what, what would you say to people? How do you how do you cut through all of that and make it simpler and get more visibility and ideally reduce the spend? So I think the easiest way is to, first of all, understand the overall spend. And as mm. I said before, you need to direct the process. Mm. So for example, there's, there's no point um, if you've got all of Australia and you want to do all of Australia or New Zealand mm. or you know Southeast Asia or wherever in the world in one go, then you need to understand exactly what trade lanes you're moving. Mm. And then you want to rationalize those trade lanes into effective zones. Uh, so I've been working with a, with a couple of clients recently who have multiple zones mm. uh, in their area of interest. And yet, if you were to couple those together, the rates don't actually change. Mm. Suddenly, instead of trying to do 5,000 trade lanes, you might be working with 500 trade lanes, mm. which is much, much easier to do. Mm. Um, so I think that's the first thing is you need to understand the, yeah. where's it coming from, where's it going to, and then you need to be speaking to the right carriers in mm. that marketplace. Mm. Uh, so for example, you might have a carrier that can do all of the big trade lanes, Mm. but they may not be able to do the route work at the same time. Yep. So you need to understand who plays in which market and therefore who you need to be getting those bids from. Yep. But you can always, always work with those standards that we discussed before. And those standards are, you know, am I looking at a kilo? Am I looking mm. at a ton? Am I looking at pallets, pallet yeah. spaces, et cetera? Yeah. And then you require all of the suppliers to come back to you in that format. Yeah. And in doing so, it's going to be the easiest to analyze. It's going to be the easiest to mm. make 
objective decisions. Um, and when it, when push comes to shove down the line, you'll be able to say, well, we followed these steps. Mm. This all came out of it. These were the agreements we made mm. both with the, the internal mm. stakeholders and the suppliers. And, you know, it'll be an effective management methodology yeah. going forward. Yeah. No, that's cool. Um, just hearing you talk through that, uh, one, one of the um, common misconceptions maybe um, about the procurement approach to you know a big freight spend like this is that very often uh, procurement people will cherry pick so you're mm -hmm. saying you know you're going out to the market maybe to dozens or even hundreds of different um, carriers um, and and maybe an inexperienced procurement person is saying well that freight lane's really good we'll have that one from that carrier and we'll have this one from that carrier but there's some pitfalls isn't there because a lot of freight companies are not actually that sophisticated and they can actually cross subsidize different lanes mm. and if you've gone and picked a lane because the rate on that lane was particularly cheap maybe it was only cheap because they were subsidizing it from other lanes yeah, and, and, and it may not be sustainable. So I, I think you, you kind of need to be wary of that. Yeah, I, I agree. So I think, and, and that's the, that's what I tell a lot of my clients. I say, you mm. know what, you, because of the way that this has been done, you've got a train smash coming. Mm. There will be a point in time where that carrier is no longer sustainable at that price mm. and therefore they can't support that work. Yep. Yep. Um, and the last thing you want is for them to tell you when you actually need them mm. in an urgent or an important sense. Mm. So what, what I typically do is I absolutely look at the, at the cherry pick price. I mean, I understand what the mm. absolute savings value or the absolute yeah. lowest cost will be. And then I start looking at uh, who can't actually do the work. Yeah. Um, you know, who, who have I had issues with in the past? Mm. You know, is this someone who's trying to break into a new market and do I yep. want to be their guinea pig? Yep. Remembering, of course, that the more carriers you have, the bigger challenge you're going to have down the line because you're going to need to control all of that, mm. uh, that variety. Yep. And so, obviously, if you have a single carrier, it's mm. easy to control. If you have 50 carriers, it's difficult yep. to control. Yep. Um, so, yeah. No, I, I think um, what, what you've explained there is, is absolutely right. And it's the, the complexity of it all. It's not just a mathematical exercise. You've got to understand the capability of the different carriers. You've got to understand what the sort of bottom rate is in the market. So that, yep. you know, if some rates are coming through that look too cheap, you know, that that's, uh, raises a red flag as well. I mean, you, you actually remind me of uh, a client that I worked with last year, um, they had some of the cheapest freight rates. It was in the medical sector, um, chilled product, you know, it was very sensitive freight. They had some amazingly cheap freight rates. And, and we said to them, we don't think this is sustainable. You know, we need to mm. have a really good look at this because we don't want to see you get locked into a five-year contract or something. And then, you know, very quickly, the freight companies coming back to you and saying that we can't do it at this rate anymore. Yep. Um, so there was a lot of due diligence went into that. And, uh, no, it, it was it was purely the fact that the freight company was building their business around this one particular client. It was a great relationship, and you know they wanted to be there for the long term. So, yep. I think uh, yeah, you just need a little bit of caution sometimes. But hey, we've got a great rate. Mm, if it's too cheap, check it out. <laughs> yeah, and and of course the other pitfall is that they might be building up their profitability in other areas. Yeah, uh, exactly. it's not uncommon for them to start reducing um, yeah. you know the amount of free time they give you, and therefore they're yeah. getting their profitability That's and their right. demurrage. Sure. Or they might start, you know, saying, no, actually, that's a difficult delivery. I'm going to have to charge you a surcharge for that. Yeah. You know, so you, you see all of these things all of the time. Mm. Uh, yeah. And I think it goes back to a conversation we've had in the past. It's not effective procurement is not just about price. Mm. You know, it's about understanding the, the service level that you actually require mm. and then finding the suppliers that can offer that service level, whether it's in in quality of service, if yep. it's in safety, if it's in chain of responsibility, whatever those discriminators Absolutely. are. And then once you've got a bundle of suppliers that can provide mm. that service, mm. then you start looking at price and, and the comparing apples to apples. Mm. But if you're simply looking at someone and saying, well, they can do it for X and these guys can do it for X minus two. So we'll use them. Well, they might be a bulk haulage carrier who's just starting to get into pallet work now. Yep. So you, you just have to be careful of those things as yeah. if all you're doing is looking at price. Yep. Okay. Well, I think uh, we'll, we'll wrap that at that point. Um, some great insights there into uh, freight procurement. Thank you very much, Trent. Great to have My you pleasure. on the channel again. Thank you. Uh, and just a reminder to everybody watching, if you've got any questions or you've got some other tips you'd like to add of your own, do comment down below. We'd love to see that. 
And uh, if you're enjoying the channel, do think about subscribing and hit that bell. And that way you'll be notified every time we have a new video coming out. And they come out generally every week on a Wednesday. So thank you, Trent. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, we'll maybe have to have another chat very soon.